Today we are going to talk about how to use ChatGPT to construct useful bioinformatics software and tools without any prior coding knowledge. ChatGPT or the Generative Pre-Training Transformer is a large language model developed by OpenAI that is designed to generate human-like text by predicting the next word in a sequence based on the context of the previous words. While GPT was not specifically designed for coding, it can potentially be useful in some coding-related tasks. Here are a few examples of how GPT could be used in coding. Code generation, GPT could be used to generate code snippets or entire programs based on a given prompt or set of requirements. For example, you could provide GPT with a description of the desired functionality of a program, and it could generate the corresponding code in a specific programming language. Documentation, GPT could be used to generate documentation for code projects. For example, you could provide GPT with the source code of a program and some basic information about its purpose and usage, and it could generate detailed documentation explaining how the code works and how to use it. Code completion, GPT could be used to assist with code completion by suggesting the next few lines of code based on the context of the code that has already been written. This could potentially save time and reduce errors for developers working on large code projects. Debugging, GPT could be used to help debug code by analyzing the code and providing suggestions for potential issues or improvements. Now let's look at how to construct some simple GUI software with the help of ChatGPT without any coding knowledge. Simple FASTA processor that can read and write FASTA files into your system. First, open the chat GPT and open a new chat. Now type, give me a code for ATK Inter interface to read and write FASTA files. After pressing enter, you will get a code in a matter of seconds. Now, all you have to do is copy this code, paste it into the Python PyCharm interface, and run the program. Use this TK Inter interface to read a file on your system, edit it, and save it back to your system. As you can see, it is not very visually appealing or complex at this stage. However, you can add many more features to this code using the GPT chat. Now, let's see how to create a nucleotide counting GUI app for a given DNA sequence. Once again, open the chat GPT and start a new chat. Type TK enter code for counting the number of nucleotides separately for a given DNA sequence and press enter. A code will be generated by the chat GPT. Copy the code and paste it on the PyCharm interface. Give it a run. I will use the sequence of an existing FASTA file to test the app. I will copy the sequence and paste it in the text box of our nucleotide counter. After pressing count, it will give the exact number of nucleotides present in our sequence separately. Let's try another example. This time, I will be using another sequence. Again, you can develop these simple tools into something bigger by just using the chat GPT without knowing anything about coding. Now let's see how to construct a GUI to conduct a blast for a given sequence. First, let's see what is a blast. Blast or the basic local alignment search tool is a software program and web-based tool that searches a given sequence against a database of sequences and returns a list of similar sequences. It is widely used in bioinformatics and molecular biology to identify homologous sequences in different organisms, perform evolutionary analyses, and annotate gene and protein functions. As usual, to build the GUI, what we just need to do is ask ChatGPT to generate the TK intercode that build an interface which conduct blast for a given FASTA file. Copy the code, pass it in PyCharm, and run the program. 
Then select a FASTA file in your system and click on the BLAST button. This would take several minutes to give the results. Results would contain query sequence ID, subject sequence ID, percent identity, alignment length, number of mismatches, number of gap openings, start and end positions of the alignment in the query and subject sequences, E value, and the alignment for the top 50 hits. Thanks for watching our video on ChatGPT. We hope you learned something new and useful today. If you have any questions or would like to learn more, be sure to leave a comment or check out our other videos on the School of Bioinformatics. We know that learning can be hard work, so we want to thank you for taking the time to watch and engage with our content. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. This helps us to create more content like this and helps more people discover our videos. Again, thanks for watching and we hope to see you in our next video.